saw my name on the list to do a devotion. Um, <laughs> it, it's changed about four or five times, and it changed again today. Um, and, and I started thinking about all the places we've been this week, and still yet to do tomorrow night. What, and again, this is the question that hit me today as we left the market. What have we seen this week, thus far, that's common to us? That, that was the question I asked myself. What about this week has been common? There are two things that came to mind immediately to me, and only two. McDonald's and Walmart. <laughs> that's about the only common thing. Uh, the environment is uncommon. The food has been uncommon. The times have been uncommon. The people that you have worked with every day, unlike a day at the university, has been uncommon. Well, every, I don't think we've done has been uncommon. And this scripture, which is a favorite scripture of mine, uh, came to my mind, uh, and I want to share it with you tonight, and I'll be quick if the, the verses are rather lengthy, but uh, it's in Luke chapter 24, beginning in verse 13. Luke 24 beginning in verse 13. And behold, two of them were going that very day to a village named Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. I get the picture. They're walking here, okay? They don't have a nice bus uh, in Salvador to carry them around. They're, they're walking seven miles uh, to Jerusalem. And, and they were conversing with each other about all the things that had just taken place. Well, what had just taken place? If you go back uh, one chapter in Luke 23, you basically see that Jesus brought before Pilate and Herod. Uh, he's crucified and has risen again. That's what happens in chapter 4. So those are the things these two were discussing when it says they were conversing about all the things that had taken place. And it came about that while they were conversing and discussing, Jesus himself approached and began traveling with them. Look at verse 16. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. So here you got these two cats walking the road, kicking rocks down the road, because they're probably sad, maybe. They're dejected, maybe a little forlorn, depressed, we would use that word, because of all the things that had just happened. They had just seen Jesus crucified and buried. Now they find they talk a little later about what's happened. But the Savior, the one they thought was going to be the Savior of Israel, has just been put to death. And so here they are walking, and they're talking, and Jesus joins them, but they don't realize it. Verse 17, and he said to them, what are these words that you're exchanging with one another as you're walking? And they stood still, looking sad. And one of them, named Cleopas, answered and said to him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem and unaware of the things which have happened here in these days? Rusty translation, have you been under a rock? Do you not know what has just happened? In verse 19, and he says to them, What things? And they said to him, The things about Jesus, the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, in the sight of God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him up to be sentenced to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, it is the third day since these things happened. But also some women among us amazed us when they were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find the body. They came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just exactly as the women also had said. But him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish men and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken, was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and enter into his glory? I love this verse 27. And beginning with Moses and with all the prophets, not just a few, all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. So here these two guys are walking along. Jesus joins them. They don't realize it. He's asking them, hey, what's going on? You know, why are you acting so sad? And then it says he began teaching them about the things of himself. Beginning with Moses and the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. I imagine Jesus walking along somehow, some way, said, in Genesis, I am the ram at Abraham's altar. 
They didn't realize that. In Exodus, I'm the Passover lamb. Look right there in Leviticus, I'm the high priest. In Joshua, I'm that scarlet thread that hangs out Rahab's window. In Judges, I'm the faithful judge. In the book of Daniel, I'm the fourth in the fiery furnace. From Moses to Malachi, he was teaching these two about himself, and they had no clue. And they approached the village where they were going, and he acted as though he would go farther. And they urged him, saying, Stay with us, for it is getting toward evening, and the day is now nearly over. And he went in to stay with him. And it came about that when he had reclined at the table with him, he took the bread and blessed it, and breaking it, he began giving it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. Look what they did. And they said to one another, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us on the road, while he was explaining the scriptures to us? And they arose that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found gathered together the eleven and those who were with them, saying, The Lord has really risen, and he has appeared to Simon. And they began to relate their experiences on the road and how he was recognized by them in the breaking of the bread. This week, we've experienced a lot of uncommon things for you and I. Three days from now, we're going to be back in Campbellsville where things are common for you and I. We're going to go back to work. We're going to be with our families. We're going to be running our kids to the ballpark. We're going to be back in our church. We're going to be back in class. Things are going to be common again. We'll have McDonald's and we'll have Walmart. And things will be common again in our life. In this scripture, what I see is Jesus met these two in a very common place. The road between Emmaus and Jerusalem. Probably a highly traveled road. Jerusalem was a destination. So it's probably a common place. There were probably a lot of travelers. This was the Bluegrass Parkway. <laughs> but a common place. And that's where Jesus met these two. And one said to the other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he was teaching us, while he was opening the scripture to us as we walked along the road? My prayer for us, guys, is that when we go back home and we see Jesus in common places, <coughs> common to us is the softball field, the basketball court, the golf course, the soccer field, the cheerleading practice, the gymnasium, the football field, the baseball field, the training room, wherever. Those are common places for us. But we're going to be, we're going to see 700 athletes come back. And we're going to meet them in our common places. And I hope they see Jesus in us. I hope they meet Jesus in a common place because we're there to share Jesus with them. Just like Jesus shared you with these two on the road to mates. I hope our student athletes and those that we deal with each and every day in our common place see Jesus. And I pray the second thing is that our hearts burn for that. These two said, did our hearts not burn within us while he was teaching us? And I hope and pray that our hearts will burn in our community when we leave this place. This is a great experience, guys. But we're going to go back to what's common for us. And that's the reality. This is great. This has got me fired up. I've seen things I've never seen in my life. I'll be 52 years old, and I've never been in a place like I went yesterday. I've been in some rough places in Miami, in Chicago, in Knoxville, in Atlanta, but nothing like I went yesterday. That's about as uncommon as this old boy's ever seen. When we go back to Campbellsville, that exists. We just don't see it because we're there every day. There are people that are hungry in Campbellsville. There are women that are abused. And folks, I pray that our heart burns for those people. And they see Jesus in us. Pray with me. Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity we've had to, to witness and experience the things that we have seen here in these few days. Father, I thank you for the score team and all they've done to accommodate us 
to provide these opportunities, to make schedules and schedule changes and the things that need to happen to make this week a reality. Father, I thank you for the individuals sitting in this room, for the gifts and the talents you have given them beyond their sport. And Father, I thank you for their commitment to make this trip. And Father, we could experience you in an uncommon place for us. But Lord, I pray for each and every person in this room that our hearts would burn for those around us that we see each and every day in our common place. In our road to Emmaus, I pray that we encounter Jesus. And our eyes are open to the things around us. And that our spiritual eyes are open to the needs of the people in our community and our student athletes. That our spiritual ears are open so we can hear the needs and be your hands and your feet, Jesus, to meet those needs. So, Father, I thank you for a great time that we've had. Father, I thank you for this scripture. And I pray, Lord, that it would be used to encourage us and encourage those around us. So, Father, we, we give you this time. We, we pray, Lord, that as we go through the next days, that we would be reminded to look for the things in the common places where Jesus is needed and we can be the light in the dark world. Father, we give you thanks for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <coughs>